Now, thanks to all of the tools that are in BlackBerry Composer, which ships free with the product, you can really add a degree of animation to not only your themes, but your web applications and your Java applications. And here's an example of a theme from my friends at Magmet Games, where they've created a theme that in the background, the fish will swim around, bubbles will randomly surface on the home screen, and it really makes the theme compelling. And no doubt you've seen BlackBerry themes where people just sit and, and eye them in, in awe in terms of their dynamicism. Now, my favorite part about the product is, like all BlackBerry development tools today on blackberry.com slash developers, BlackBerry Theme Studio is a completely free product. You don't pay for it. Anybody can go and download it today and start creating themes, whether it's for their use, their company's use, or somebody else's use. For those that have been using BlackBerry, uh, pardon me, Plasmic Content Developers Kit 4.7 and are now wondering about what's new in BlackBerry Theme Studio version 5.0, there's a number of exciting features. First and foremost, late in 2009, we announced the BlackBerry Storm 2 and the BlackBerry Bold 9700. BlackBerry Theme Studio version 5.0 allows you to create themes for those particular BlackBerry smartphones. We've also made enhancements for a number of other BlackBerry smartphones, including the original Storm, the BlackBerry Tour, and the BlackBerry Curve 8520. By popular request, we've also added the ability for customers to add ringtones to their themes. So now not only can you change the visuals of how a BlackBerry will look, you can also change the sounds as well. A good example here would be is if you were a record label and you wanted to make a theme to promote your musical artist. You could make a theme with album artwork in the, in the wallpapers. You could feature uh, pictures of the artist in the theme. You could have links to the artist's site. You could have links to uh, third-party applications that promote the artist. And you can also have the artist's song play when the phone rings. So it really leads to that dynamic multimedia experience. In addition to that multimedia theme, we've added the ability to put in screen transitions to your themes. So as the user navigates from, for example, the home screen to the application screen to the lock screen, um, the screens can zoom in and out, they can fade, they can wipe, and it generally gives a really great experience. Now, as I mentioned earlier, a number of customers today are creating today themes where information such as my latest emails and calendar appointments start appearing in my home screen. We've added today themes back into BlackBerry device software 5.0, and BlackBerry Theme Studio version 5.0 allows you to create today themes once again. In addition, we, as with every release, we go out to our vast Theme Studio audience and we, we look for other enhancements in the product, and they provide us a list of of enhancements which we've added in and you can see them here. A few other exciting features, we had a request for um, people who are making applications to put third-party applications on the home screen of a theme and we've added that in so that gives a great degree of personalization to a device. We've also added a number of usability enhancements because at the end of the day we want to make it very, very easy for people to create themes from beginning to end. We added a new quick start screen in Theme Studio version 5.0, which will help you select the BlackBerry smartphone that you want to create your theme for. It would also let you work on recent files that you've, you might have been working on in various stages in your iteration process. And it will also take you to our various community resources online. We've enhanced Adobe Photoshop compatibility. So with this particular release, you can now bring in Photoshop PSD files directly into Theme Builder if you have existing assets. We've enhanced our color dithering, so the colors that you see on the screen of your desktop closely reflect what you're going to see on the device itself. And finally, for those that use SVG graphics today, we've added support for SVG Tiny 1.1. Now with that, what I'd like to do is turn the, the presentation over to my colleague Dale Ducharme to do a demonstration of BlackBerry Theme Studio to show you how to create a theme from beginning to end. Hello, this is Dale Ducharme and I'm Team Lee for the Theme Studio 5.0 product. Today we're going to take a look at putting a theme together from scratch. So the first program we're going to launch is called BlackBerry Theme Builder. You'll notice when we start out we can select from any of the pre-existing devices that we support. So it goes all the way back to the 8700 support for the Storm and the Tour and all the way up to the new Bold 9700. So today we're going to create a theme for that device. And you notice that in the interface when we come in, on the left we have the preview area, and on the right we have the inspectors. And the inspectors are broken down into the various screens we have. So the message list screen, the phone screens, the lock screens, and all the different properties that we can uh, change are on the right here. So the first thing we're going to look at is changing the banner profiles icon out. 
So we're going to change that to this. And you see on the right when we change it, it'll reflect in the preview on the left. So the next thing we're going to look at is actually looking at starting in the home screen. So we're going to switch the background edit here to something different. So you can select from any of the different images you already have on your disk. And it will automatically resize them to the proper size. Uh, if you wanted to pre-scale them, you can use an image editor of your choice, pre-scale them and bring them in. Next, we're going to look at creating a very similar screen to the Zen screen, except we're going to have the application launchers be along the left and the right side. So we're going to do three along the left and three along the right. Um, so basically, you can select them all and change their properties all at once. So we're going to change the focus icon for each of these application launchers to the one we used in the banner profile area already. And the next thing we want to do is um, add a little pizzazz. So you can sele select animations for these uh, when you focus into them. So on the left, the three ones on the left are actually going to bounce in from the left. And the three on the right, when you focus in, will actually spring to in from the right. So you'll see that once we get it up and running here. We're just going to realign these things with the alignment tools bring them down and that's basically what our home screen is going to look like when they have the focus icons in. So the next thing we need is to know which application name is in focus. So we can use the status text area here to do that. And basically we can set it up to be any font we want that we already have installed on our system. Um, and you can change them there with the font selection and it'll show the current application name. Next thing we're going to look at the theming the application list area. So once again we're going to just change the background out. We're going to change the focus icon to be something a little lighter blue than the normal blue that we have. You can also change any of the icons for any of the applications that are already shipped. So if we change the calendar icon to the bullets You'll see it reflected in the interface here. And you can do that for any of the focus and normal icons for any of the applications. You can also add up to 10 web links to the application list screen. So for example, if we wanted to create a link to the mobile.blackberry.com, we could do that through this. Um, and then when you click on it, it would actually go to that site. And then you can set up different icons for those as well. Next, we'll look at theming the controls, so the different buttons and dialogues, menus, etc. So let's start with the buttons. So any image you can take in and you can edit if you have it set up in your preferences. So we've selected Photoshop as our favorite editor. So when we hit edit, it'll bring us in here and we're just going to take the image and change it to be a lighter blue. So we're happy with that save that out and then we can hide photoshop and then go back to the button and hit reload and we got our image back now you can drag and drop that back onto the other images that are very similar so the disabled highlight in the active will also make the same thing go into the menu screen and we want to theme the cursors. So basically for cursor selection you can have a choice between color, gradient, or image. So we're going to use gradients and basically select from these two lighter blue colors. Click OK and there we have it reflected in the interface. We want to do the same thing for the list cursors as well. So we can select there. 